In this tutorial, I want to take a closer look at the merge and alignment features of HDR Expose 3. Specifically, we're going to focus on the deghosting functionality. Let's start by merging an image. I'm going to click on the Create New Image button, and I'll see this dialog. Now, one thing I want to point out are some of the other controls up here. Here's where you choose the folder that you want. The software will always open up the last folder you used when you launch this the next time. But I want to switch to a different folder. So I want to click on the Choose button. And I have a folder up here called HDR Demo Files. Now you notice when I click on it that you see all the file names inside this folder and they're all grayed out. That's because we're not selecting individual files like we've done in the past but we're loading the folder and showing you all of these images as thumbnails in the application. So I've selected the folder, and I say choose, and now the thumbnails are loaded. Another thing you'll notice is that we have this line here called the source filter. Now this is important because if you open a folder and you can't see the images you thought were in that folder, chances are you might have the wrong thing selected here. So here you're able to choose your source files, so either RAW files, TIFF files, or JPEG images. Now the reason there's a source filter there is because you can only merge images of the same file type. You can't merge RAW files with TIFFs or, or JPEGs. They all have to be of the same file type. So this setting here will help you filter out all the other images and files formats that may be in that folder and only show you the ones that can be merged together. So now that I have my folder selected, I'm going to go down and find the set of images that I want to work on. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to click on the Manual Align and Deghost option. And then press the Preview button below. This creates a preview of what my merged photo will look like. Now there are a couple of elements that control the deghosting functionality in this case. The first thing I want to highlight is the keyframe list. This list contains all the images that are being used to merge the file. In this case I have five individual files here because there were five images in my bracket sequence. I can select any one of these images to be my keyframe and you can see the effect that this will have on the image. In this case, I might want to go through the various images to find the one where the people are point looking in the right direction or standing in the right location. For the most part, you'll get the best result when you select a keyframe that is either at the zero EV frame or darker. Now, the reason for this is the overexposed images often have a lot of the detail that you are need for alignment and deghosting that is overexposed. So an area that's been overexposed, you'll lose that detail information. That's why the darker images tend to work better. In this case, I'll just select this image as my keyframe, and you'll notice the little key icon. The next tool I want to highlight is the keyframe tuning slider. Now, right now, the Merge Static Photos uh, checkbox is selected. This automatically knocks down the keyframe tuning to a value of zero. And this means that the image is taking up content from all of the images in order to give you the smoothest gradation of tonality in that. And that's great when you have an image that has only static elements and no moving objects. What you can see in this case is that there's quite a bit of ghosting going on. If I look over here, you can see pieces of a person that was walking through the scene that is part of a ghost. Here's some more. So for this particular scene, with all of this movement, I need to have a higher value for my keyframe tuning. Now the default for raw files is a value of 12. And in fact, if you don't make any selections in the merge dialog and the merge static photos box is unchecked, this will be what the software sets it to automatically. Now let's look what happens when I click the apply button here and make that change. You can see now that all the ghosts have been removed in the image. It's much cleaner. And in fact, now as I click through the different keyframes, you can see how they shift. 
And in fact, here was that one element, that person here on the side of the frame, that is only in this one frame that caused that ghost artifact that we saw before. So here I can just select the, very, the keyframe that I want to use based on the content of the image. In this case, the person standing here is looking behind him, and this person is on the side of the scene. So I'll skip that one as a keyframe and try this one. Now I have everybody standing where I want. So once I've done that selection, I just hit the Merge button, and now it'll merge the image for me. Okay, here's the, the resulting image now that's been automatically tone mapped when it's loaded. So I'll just zoom in here to show you that how nicely the ghost artifacts have been cleaned up by just selecting the uh, keyframe that I want as well as adjusting the keyframe tuning slider. Now there's another way to, to remove ghosts and I'll show you how to do that in this next scene. Let me close this one out, and we'll merge another scene. This one is from a series that I took at Fort Point in San Francisco. Now for this image, I'm going to use the Merge Static Photos option because the, uh, the sequence of images taken on a tripod and it's pretty much static, except for one minor exception. I'm going to show you how I can go in and manually remove a single ghost element. So we'll go back into the, uh, the manual alignment and deghosting dialog. And you can see that the Merge Static Images box is still checked. And that means that my keyframe tuning value is set to zero, or soft. Now that's going to give me the best shadow rendition and the least amount of noise in the dark areas of this, this image when I finally process it. The problem is, though, that I have the flag up here that's moving in the wind. So I can now select a different keyframe to see the shape of the flag that I want. So as I look in here, I can see that the, the flag is blowing in the wind and there's movement, meaning this would be, uh, this would show a, a ghost artifact when the image is merged. I'm going to select a different keyframe now. I'm going to go with a 1EV keyframe. And then I'm going to select my manual ghost removal tool. This is the little ghost icon up here with the minus sign on it. I click on the flag and I expand this out over that area. You want to give yourself some room. This will taper off nicely, but you want to make sure that the flag is in the center of this, uh, this circle. Now when I hit the Apply button, what it's doing is it's taking just this portion of the keyframe image and saying, make this dominant. And you see when it does that, it renders the flag nice and straight without the other exposures compromising or creating ghost artifacts. So this is the preview now. I can, if I had other objects that were moving in this image that I wanted to isolate, I could do that the same way with multiple uh, ghost removal spots. So once I'm happy with the preview, I click on the merge button and it's going to go off and merge this image for me. And here's our final image, and let's zoom in and confirm that. So you can see when we zoom in that the flag is nice and clean, and there's no ghosting uh, artifacts in this. And that's how we do a manual ghost removal in HDR Expose 3. Thanks for watching.